Good evening, everybody. Happy Sunday evening. Uh, let's see what kind of exercise do we do. Hmm. Uh, I guess we can do some like uh, kicking, right? Yeah, as a stretch, right? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Oh. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whoo! Okay, we take five minutes, please. Oh boy. Wow, it's very hot day today. <sighs> yeah, very hot day.
Okay. <sighs> yeah, today is so hot. I've been picking up some animal feces in the yard. Oh boy. Let me get some fresh water. Wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fending off these mosquitoes in the meanwhile, right, oh boy, because I don't want my backyard to be full of animal feces, and there's some neighborhood dogs, neighborhood cats, stop by using my backyard as their bathroom, and moose, cats, so scatology is study of animal feces, okay, and which is significant for hunters and trappers uh, who get wild animals, right? They should be able to like recognize by looking at the animal feces, droppings, dongs, they know what animal feces this is, right? Hunters, trappers, and also how long it has been, which is very important knowledge for them to know to get wild wild game animals right yeah but for me it's a janitorial duty i'm running for senator but i can settle with just being a janitor okay cleaning up my yard cleaning my bathroom some weekly routine no problem all right Yeah, I picked up all those scatologically significant parts in yard. Yeah. Fending off these mosquitoes. Uh, that's the worst part, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But no parts of my skin is itchy, so I guess I fend them off mosquitoes. Yeah, so that's the only thing I do about my yard. I never mow the lawn, never do that. Just picking up animal feces, that's all I do. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Okay, let's get a white board, shall we? It's so hot, I'm gonna open the windows over there.
Yeah. Okay, let's do some work, right? Uh, yeah, interesting Korean word, dark, dark. Dark is like darkness, but it means chicken. Okay, so th there's not, nothing dark about it. Well, there's some dark chicken in Korea. Of course, Ogolge, it means uh, black bone chicken. Okay, so the, I, I ate it. When I was in Korea, uh, it tastes great, and um, but the bone is not black. It, the black bone chicken, its bone is actually kind of gray. Mm. But that's its name. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, K means dark. Uh, the chicken. Okay, so D A D A. RK, RK, but well, this is about like a G, okay, what is Korean K, uh, is, this is Korean K, okay, it's like flipped F, but this K, Korean K, this is Korean G, okay, it's more like dark, okay, dark, as opposed to K, okay, whatever, so yeah, it was that kind of two-dimensional arrangement, that's how Korean and also Chinese, um, other languages kind of two-dimensional, two which is really cool, okay? So, anyway. Uh, but Japanese is mostly like one-dimensional, just like English, okay? Uh, the Japanese alphabet, right? I don't know too much Japanese, okay? I don't know how, even how to read Japanese, right? But Japanese, they use a lot of uh, uh, Chinese characters, just like Koreans do, okay? So, anyway. Uh, so in the movie, the Lost in Translation, that's called, what's called Samcheonri Yakpum. What does that mean? 3,000 miles uh, opposite carry the drugstore. Okay. So they're very interesting Chinese character, okay? This is, in Korean, it's pronounced as Pum. Three squares, right? Yeah, it means... Uh, like mart, market, store, okay? So, yakpum, yeah. It means drugstore, okay? Yeah. It, it, this Chinese character, okay? So, the Japanese also use, Koreans use that too. Anyway, so, we, let's talk about mapping, shall we? Mapping. Just one dimensional, two one dimensional rod, okay? Let's say from A to B, you want to map elements between A to B into C to D. Okay. What would be that map mapping function? Okay, because it's, it's important concept. At the same time, uh, it's important for us in our definition of correlation coefficient okay so because it's tricky concept let's go spend some more time on it okay we're generalizing it basically okay what would be this mapping function okay you have numbers between a and b infinite numbers and between c and d you have also more infinite numbers okay or it could be shrinking or expanding, whatever, okay? So, we are mapping this with fu one function, f, okay? Mapping function. Evenly. Alright, so. So this paper, the what the uh, Neo Pebblemine project, yeah, yeah, it, it's people are reading it, okay, my friends, and I'm getting positive reviews, so I'm happy about that. And uh, unlike other papers, ecology paper, humanology paper, like metaphysics paper, physics paper, those are quite quite technical, right? 
But this nail paper, my project paper, it's more uh, down to earth, more practical, right? As opposed to abstract, general. It's more specific, clearly dealing with uh, the contemporary events. So I guess it's more readable and accessible. Yeah, I think it's important as a public intellectual, private scholar, that we do contribute to the contemporary society. I think it's very important. What good is all the knowledge, right? If it's not helping people, then there's not too much point there, right? Yeah. yeah. So can, can you come up with a formula for this? Mapping function? I'll give five minutes if you want to, okay? Yeah, let's uh, take five minutes, shall we? Yeah. It'd be a function of A, B, C, and D. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Ah.
Okay. So before before we generalize this, let's uh, look at the concept itself, correlation coefficient. Yeah, it is significant because uh, in business, market share, right? In Ireland of all Asians, okay? Just we are just, okay. United States, we are multiple races, but when it comes to market, car market, we have brands, car companies like General Motors, you have Ford, you have Mitsubishi, you have Mercedes, uh, you have BMW, whatever, okay? So market share, because when it comes to car selling, it doesn't matter who, what race this consumer has, Asian, black, white, it doesn't matter. Right? Because all that matter is money. If this person can pay the money to buy a car, Mitsubishi or Honda, Toyota, Kia, Hyundai, or Ford, General Motors, whatever. Okay? Yeah. So how much market? Okay. Let's say there's three brands. Okay. Ford, General Motors, and Mercedes. Okay. And let's say Ford company, about 33% of Americans have Fords, hypothetically, okay? And then 10% General Motors. And 57% Mercedes, hypothetically, okay? Then you can see uh, General Motors is not doing very well. 
Ford average. Mercedes doing very well, right? Because it's more than 33%, which is the even ground. Okay, the, you have zero correlation, negative correlation, and positive correlation. Okay. It's, it's about popularity, market share. Okay, so that's why it's significant. It's not just, it, it's more than probability. Okay, it's uh, business con application too, business concept, market share. Okay. All right, back to mathematics. Let me get fresh water. There's something in there, so we... All right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Some dirt. Ah, oh, this water, tap water, Alaskan tap water is so good. It's like melted glacier, melted snow <laughs> coming from mountains. Under the ground, there's a stream, like river, all right? Ooh, pure water, very, very clean. Okay, so here you have gap B minus A. Here you have D minus C. Okay. So let's say there's number here, x, becomes some number here, y, okay? So y is equal to, uh, if a function of x, a, b, c, d, and you want to find arithmetic formula for it. Let me chill a little bit. Uh, Ah, I don't know the answer yet, but we kind of got vague idea because we came up with this cor correlation coefficient formula over there, right? Yay. <coughs> so let me chill on it, chill on it a little bit. Okay, it is whiteboard I'm looking at back there. Oh, it's more difficult than I thought, huh? Ay. Ah. <sighs> uh. I think one way to think about it is this ratio. Okay. Let's say you have Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale. Okay. It's that kind of conversion formula. There will not be any calculus, it's just fraction. All right. It's a scaling problem. Okay. Uh, Fahrenheit is very fine grained, twice as more fi fine grained than Celsius. Okay. Uh, Celsius is very blunt scale ruler. Okay. Uh, Fahrenheit is twice as sensitive than Celsius scale. Okay? So. Well, it can be expansion or shrink, whatever. Okay? Contraction or expansion. So. 
Um, I guess would be hypothetically the factor in this case would be d minus c over b minus a. It doesn't matter whether it's contraction or expansion. In this graphical example, it is expansion. Okay. Yeah. Let's say this gap is 2 and this gap becomes like 10. Then 10 divided by 2, 5, right? Yeah. Okay. It will be used somewhere in this formula. Uh, and. My guess is this, all right? You have smaller gap from C to Y and smaller gap from C A to X, right? Uh, that gap is like X minus A. And you have gap here, which is Y minus C. Okay? So, uh, y minus c is equal to x minus a multiplied by d minus c over b minus a. We got it. I think this is it. Another way to look at it is x minus a over y minus c must be equal to b minus a over d minus c. Then we get the same thing here. Right? Yeah. So we got it. y is equal to x minus a times d minus c over b minus a plus C. We got it. That was not too difficult, was it? So that's why. So this is our transformation function, okay? Good. Whew. Very basic mathematics. Elementary school level, okay? Yeah, but it was not that obvious to me, okay? It's elementary school algebra, okay? So. There we go. Let's take five minutes, please. Okay. Okay, we got it. Good. <clears throat> okay. Scaling problem.
Oh. Uh. Now. We're going to introduce one more variable here, okay? Uh, tendency, okay? We call it correlation, right? Correlativity, okay? Yeah, well, tendency, uh, that's the typically known as correlation, so maybe we should just correlation, huh? I don't know, whatever, okay? Uh, so, tendency, okay? So, that'll be our next step. Study of tendency, correlation. Uh, like male and female, right? I think it's fair to say males tend to be Republican, conservative, and females tend to be Democratic Party, uh, liberalistic, okay? Uh, younger people tend to be liberalistic, Democratic Party. Older people tend to be conservative and uh, Republican. Why? Uh, also, urban versus country, rural, urban versus rural. Urban, urbanites, urban people tend to be uh, liberalistic, democratic party, and ruralistic people, people in, in the country, they tend to be a uh, conservative and republican party, okay? Uh, the reason, yeah, there is reason, of course. Uh, we talked about it multiple times, so, okay. Uh, yeah. So, island, lonely island, okay, let's say half of them are Asians and the other half Hispanics, okay? And let's say there are two kinds of cars, blue car, red car. Okay, then we can start to talk about this correlation. Okay, uh, the correlation, what we used to call corre correlation, yeah, well, maybe we should call it popularity. Okay, we have to rename that stuff. But we don't want to confuse the readers, okay, so we have to be sensitive to uh, the common usage of those words. Okay. Yeah, otherwise it'd be too confusing, okay? So. Yeah, it's principle minimum change, okay? Occam's razor, kind of temporal application of Occam's razor. Uh, principle minimum change, okay? So we want minimum change, all right? Otherwise it would be too, it would result in economic waste, inefficiency, okay? Because people need to change the way they use their words, okay? So we don't want that, okay? So. If I become U.S. Senator, okay, I'll use the same set of people, employees, okay? The kind of people who now working for uh, Senator Lisa Mikorski, okay? Yeah, I, 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 I will not change. There will be no change in person, personnel, okay? Because they have been doing the staffers, Senator Lisa Mikorski's employees, okay? They know what they are doing. They have been doing this for many long years, even for decades. Okay, so yeah, I will not fire any one of them. I will just reuse them. Okay, just if I become senator next year, yeah, I will have to learn from them how things work there. Okay, so yeah. if I become United States. President in the year 2024, I'm not going to fire anybody. I'll just keep them there unless there's some irreconcilable differences, then I'll switch them out. Okay. But otherwise, I'll just keep them there. Okay. Principle of minimum change. Okay. So in Lonely Island of Asians and Hispanics, two kinds of cars. Uh, you're gonna have to grab another whiteboard, okay? Let me put on some long pants, okay? It's kind of getting chilly.
Okay, so we're done with this. Popularity. Okay. Uh, we practice martial arts, okay? Uh, I'm sorry if it kind of look violent, but martial arts is very important for us for strengthening of our spirits and body, right? It's great exercise. Also, yeah, sure, self defense, exercise, fun. It serves mu multiple purposes, okay? So I we strongly recommend everybody to practice martial arts, okay? It's, it's important. Alright? Okay. Now. You have Asians, you have Hispanics, right? You have blue car, red car, okay? Now. Zero point, reference point will be 50%, 50%, let's say there are 100 Asians, 100 Hispanics, okay? They will be like zero correlation, right? Now, next possibility. Let's say 80% of Asians have blue cars, 20% have red car, 80% of Hispanics have blue cars, and 20% of Hispanics have red cars. Okay? That means whether it's Asian or Hispanic, it doesn't matter, no matter what the race that they are. They prefer blue cars to red cars. Okay, so same degree of popularity within Asian population and within Hispanic populations. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, uh <sighs> It's a little bit tricky concept to get a hands of to grasp, right? Correlation. We know popularity wise, right? Yeah. Blue cars are more popular than red car. Right? This negative popularity of red car, positive popularity of blue car. When it's 50 50, yeah. The popularity is even, it's like zero. Popular, okay, popularity coefficient, how about that, we rename it as that, okay? Negative popularity, positive popularity, zero popularity, okay, so. Yeah. Give me one second, somebody's calling me. Okay. Uh, uh. So, if both Asians and Hispanics, they both prefer blue cars to red cars, uh, uh, when we talk about correlation, it's this, okay? Uh, does Asian tend to, when we Compare Asians and Hispanics, okay? Well, for example, when we compare men versus women, men tend to be conservative, women tend to be liberalistic. When we compare old people and young people, old people tend to be conservative, young people tend to be liberal. 
Det är bara det steg. Okej. Okay. Urban versus rural. Ja, yeah. urbanites tend to be conservative, uh, liberalistic and ruralists tend to be conservative. That's the, what we mean by correlation, our common usage of that term, right? That's the concept. But, so we are comp comparing two distinct population groups. We are categorizing the people into two groups, Asians or Hispanics. Now, do, are they the same or are they different? Is there some tendency, some kind of correlation? All right. For example, let's say, third example, uh, Asian, 80% of Asians, it is too light. 80% of Asians have blue cars, 20% of Asians have red cars, and 20% of Hispanics have blue cars, and 80% of Hispanics have red cars. Okay? Then, then, yeah, you can tell the trend, the correlation there, right? So, Asians tend to own blue cars, Hispanics tend to own red cars, okay? So what's the popularity coefficient here? I have to pull up the other whiteboard and plug in these numbers to there. I... Is that formula that we have back there is it, not a not very simple formula, right? So I don't memorize it. I have to look at it. Ah. Can we talk about politics instead? <laughs> Can we talk about politics instead? Hey, I cannot do mathematics. Well, I sometimes I do mathematics without drinking alcohol, but it's too dry a subject. We just we have just numbers, right? Letters. It's boring, and uh, alcohol really helps me doing mathematics. It's it kind of wet, moist, right? Otherwise, it's too dry. So. We take five minutes break, okay, and then I, I start drink a little. All right, so for the sake of humanity, okay, let's drink so that we keep doing mathematics. All right, let's take five minutes, please. I'm kind of getting hot too, so let me take off this. Well, outside is kind of breezy, so yeah, it, it will, uh, my body will cool down from the you know, take a breath outside. So. Okay.
don't think it's necessary that uh, we actually plug in the numbers to that formula. We already got the formula, right? That's quite a mechanical process, and I don't think it's necessary that we do so, okay? Let's just talk and observe and think about this. So, uh, the popularity coefficient is between minus 1 and 1, okay? And Asian blue car with 80, 20, 20, 80, yeah. Our formula, popularity formula, we give a po positive number and negative number here. Blue car, red car. And negative number here and positive number here. Okay. Between minus one and plus one. Okay. That's enough, all right? Now, is there something else? It could be also this, 50% Asians have blue cars, 50% Asian red cars, but when it comes to Hispanics, 80% Hispanics have blue cars, 20% have red cars. Okay. Yeah. This whole different variety, okay. Yeah. Now what? So the initial motivation for this study of correlation is uh, that California Supreme Court case, uh, People versus Collins. Uh, uh, professor of Harvard Law School, uh, what's his name? Um, Lawrence Tribe. Okay, he was a clerk for the California Supreme Court Justice. Okay? Yeah. And he wrote appendix for that, okay. So there will be the probably chapter one of this paper, like motivation, okay. People versus Collins. Uh because Mr. Mr. Uh Lawrence Tribe, Larry Tribe, he didn't quite do it correctly, okay. Although he was mathematics major in Harvard, okay. Yeah, but he erred, okay. It kind of cheated a little bit too, I guess. We point that out, okay? It's in the chapter one of that paper. And after that, chapter two, yeah, we'll do it right. Yeah? And I'm glad he wrote that appendix to that people versus Collins opinion, okay? It was very intriguing. Yeah? Yeah. Good contribution, okay? He asked the right question, although he got the answer wrong. Okay? Because we I answer it right, okay? Larry did. And the correct formula, yeah, we got that one too, okay. A couple of, about three months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. Correct formula, okay, so. I think this is pretty much it when it comes to correlation. Okay. I, I don't see any more to do here. Alright? Yeah. It's a scaling problem. Yeah, Asians, blue car, red car, 50-50, so there's zero correlation. I mean. Ah uh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's just say correlation coefficient. Okay. So. And for Hispanics, yeah, there's positive correlation. Hispanic owning red car, 80, okay? And negative correlation, Hispanic owning blue cars. We just call it correlation, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, 50 50 for Asians, okay? 20 80 for Hispanics, okay? Now, 
Okay, now we have something here. Let's say a person committed theft in this island. Witness only observed the car color of this thief. Witness did not know, did not see the driver because it come tinted window, okay? So witness cannot tell if it was Asian or Hispanic. But he, witness only knows it was a red car. Now, Asians 50 50, blue car and red car, okay? Hispanics 20 80. Then what's the probability? that this thief is Hispanic. What's the probability the thief was an Asian? I think that's the next question that we need to answer. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Okay. We are looking for a right question to ask. After that, we come up with the correct answer to that correct question. <laughs> okay. We want to ask an important question. We are looking for some question to ask. And we got it, okay? And that's how science works, okay? Uh, first, we are looking for a question, important question, relevant question to ask. After that, we answer it. First, we need to ask, look, we have to find, discover the right question to ask. Relevant, important question. And we got it, okay? Because I'm kind of wondering, what kind of question can we ask here, okay? So, People versus Collins, okay, yeah. Great. The Los Angeles City prosecutor. He could he could have uh counter level, I don't know. I don't remember, okay. So uh the prosecutor, yeah, he used probability theory, okay. He he aired too, okay. But nobody's perfect, so but we we'll get it right, okay. So okay. We take five minutes, okay? So uh, why don't you, if you want to, think about it, okay? Uh, what's the probability of that thief who drove red car in this situation? Asian, 50-50. Hispanics, 1080, okay? Given this information, what's the probability of that thief is Hispanic. Huh? Given assuming the thief belongs to red car owners. It's conditional probability, okay. All right. <coughs> Evidence. Hypothesis. Okay. We are making pro good progress here. Okay. Two more assumptions, okay? Uh, Asian is 50-50, okay? Hispanics, uh, 20-80, okay? Blue car, red car, blue car, red car, okay? So, uh, blue, red, blue, red, okay? So, th those are the three assumptions, okay? So, and we know thief drive, Red cars, red car. What's the probability that this thief is Hispanic? <sighs> is it more likely that this thief is Hispanic? Yeah. Why? The Asians 50 50, blue car, red car, and when it comes to Hispanics, it's 20 80. 
It's just common sense. Okay, we are not being racist here. Okay, is politically incorrect? I get it, but uh, we have to make this kind of uh, examples. Okay? We are not racist. I love Hispanics. Some of my best friends are Hispanic. Okay, I have nothing against Hispanics. I've been to Mexico. Okay, great country. Okay. We're just making an example, that's it. Okay? We don't have time for political correctness, okay? <laughs> we are busy. So, okay, we'll take five minutes and then we do this, okay? Yeah. Making good progress, right? Yeah. Welcome to humanology, okay? Yeah. Anything goes, anything good, okay? So let's take a break from mathematics, shall we? Hey. Uh. E. Yeah, the the red one kind of became too stale, so it's Burgundy. 
Italian. Burgundy, that's French, right? But it, this is Italian wine. Italian, Californian, American wine. French, Italian, Californian, American red wine. Burgundy, okay. Carlo Rossi, okay. Anyway. Uh, let's take a break from mathematics. Uh, so, uh, we get back to it. So politics, okay, we work and play. Work, mathematics, politics, leisure, play, right? It's more fun, politics, right? Yeah. So we work, so we, let's play a little. We need Republicans, we need Democrats, okay? We, checks and balances, that's great. Two-party system, okay? Very stable. Polity, political system. Uh, checks and balances, okay? So, complementation, right? Dual dualism, yin and yang, right? Yeah. Double dualism, that's what dual dualism is. Uh, we need both parties, they're doing a great job, I think. And, but when it comes to politician, I think it's best politician is a neutral a candidate, candidates, okay? So this Montreal candidate, uh, or the what Stepford wife, this programmed robot. I don't think it's desirable to have that kind of candidate, right? So that's my criticism against President Obama, President Trump, President Biden. Okay, they're like party animals, like programmed machinery, brainwashed by this party platform. Okay, I think it's highly undesirable, right? Uh. So yeah, Mrs. Commissioner, she's fall into that category, kind of programmed response, robotic, kind of like step forward wife or uh Montreal candidate kind of. Okay, so yeah, that that's that was my criticism against her candidacy. Okay, she's playing too much of party politics. Okay, yeah, I don't think that's desirable. Okay, okay, back to this. So let's step back. Okay. So this in this lonely island, you have 200 people, 100 Asians and 100 Hispanics, okay? Out of these 200 people, if you just pick one person, random, what's the probability that that person is thief? What did they, what else did he steal? Let's say he stole uh, gums, chewing gums, from a store, all right? It's a petty thief, petty theft, but still, it's a crime. Is that misdemeanor? I guess so. I don't think it's felony, okay? I, I don't know, I, I, I don't do criminal law, okay? I, I, I'm a civil lawyer, okay, so. But I, I, my guess is that it's misdemeanor, okay? Pedicept. There's varying degree of misdemeanor, like class A misdemeanor, class B, class 3, okay. Like, uh, class A, B, C, whatever, okay. So, if I have to guess, I, my guess is it, it probably is class B misdemeanor, okay. Class A misdemeanor is the most serious one, at, at least in the state of Alaska, okay. As far as I know, okay. Uh, but I don't practice criminal law, okay, so I could be wrong. Okay. Anyway. <coughs> so out of 200 people, let's say they're all guys, okay. Uh, whatever, for simplicity, okay. And out of 200 citizens of this lonely island, okay, we people to some random person, what's the probability that person is the thief? There will be. You need more time? I'll give you one minute, okay? Uh, yeah. I want some blueberry vodka. Where's my favorite blueberry vodka? <laughs> there it is. This is from last year, I think. Uh. Yeah, I smell things first. If it went bad, 
Yeah, I don't drink, I don't eat that stuff. When it comes to boiled egg, right, sometimes it go get addled, go bad. So I taste it and I spit it out. If it tastes funky. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, probability is 1 over 200. Okay? We only have one fifth. Give, without any information, witnesses, evidences. Yeah. You just pick one person random. The probability that person is the thief is 1 over 200. We, we don't have any information. Okay? Very small probability, right? Yeah. But as we have evidence, witnesses, then we can narrow down. Okay. Now, we have this information. We have witness of this crime, misdemeanor crime. Okay. Crime, there are two kinds, felony or misdemeanor. Okay. So misdemeanor is still crime. Okay. And that's what's called infraction. That's like parking ticket or speeding ticket. It's not a crime. It's infraction. It's violation of traffic regulation, infraction. Okay. Those are not even a crime. It's called infraction. Okay. It's not even misdemeanor. Right? Misdemeanor is crime punishable under one year, up to one year and $1,000 fine. Can this person thief go to jail? Yes. Misdemeanor is a crime punishable. Up to one year in jail. Yeah, this person can go to jail for this. Pain theft. Yeah, it's just chewing gum, but still. Maybe, how, yeah, maybe one dollar chewing gum, okay, but still a theft, misdemeanor. This person can go to jail. Depending on the states, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. According to the witness, this person drove red car. Okay. Now, yeah, what's the probability? How many red car owners are there in this island? 50 plus 80, 130. So probably it becomes 1 over 130. We are narrowing down. Okay. So if we pick some random red car owner in this island, what's the probability that person is a criminal? 1 over 130. Which is higher probability than one over two hundred. We are narrowing down the pool of suspects from two hundred to one hundred and thirty. It's narrow. We are narrowing down. We are going to zero in. Okay. So yeah and yeah. Okay. So that's conditional probability there. Yeah. yeah, it's like Sherlock Holmes. Right? Detective Sherlock Holmes or Inspector Sherlock Holmes or like uh, Arsene Lupin, the gentleman burglar is criminal cases. Okay? So he is not a murderer, he's a thief. He's kind of like Robin Hood, kind of, a little bit, okay? So, well, that's, that's what he describes himself. Arsene Lupin, okay? Gentleman burglar. He says he's only still from thieves. Huh? Yeah. Kind of Robin Hood-ish, a little bit, right? Yeah. I think Robin Hood is British. <laughs> Whatever. No violence here, okay? It's just heist, thief. Again, it's a crime, it's wrong. We are not advocating for thieving practices no we are more like playing the role of Sherlock Holmes detective okay very scientific mathematical okay Okay.
What's the probability? Given the information, the thief is a red car owner. That thief is an Asian, or that thief is a Hispanic. Okay, what will be the probability of that? It will require some thinking, okay? I don't have the answer yet. Uh, they better add up to one, okay? Because this, this island is either Asian or Hispanic, okay? Uh, so the probability of this thief being an Asian, given that information, dot, 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 right? Plus probability of this thief being a Hispanic, given that same evidence information, dot, 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 okay? It better sum up to one. Why? Because uh, this thief is either Asian or Hispanic. There, in this hypothetical scenario, there is no other race. They better add up to one, okay? Yeah. I don't have the answer yet, okay? It's a challenge. I think I might have an answer, okay? So, this, our working hypothesis is this, 50 Asians blue, 50 Asians red, car, 20 Hispanics blue cars, 80 Hispanics red cars, okay? We know the thief has red car. I think I got the answer. Mm -hmm. So, Question is, what's this probability and what's this probability and do they not want? Okay, it's, it's not that difficult, okay? Yeah, I, I, I know what the answer is now, by now, okay? It was not easy. It was not that difficult either, okay? It's kind of a medium, kind of difficulty problem, okay? But, uh, yeah. I'll give you five minutes, okay? If you want to think about it. You don't have to. Right? No pressure, all right? Yeah. All right? The answer lies in those, these two rectangles, okay? The four numbers. It's that simple, okay? Yeah. All right, we take five minutes and then uh, we compare the answers if you want to, okay? Otherwise, I'll tell you in five minutes, okay? Okay. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> okay.
Okay. So. Yeah, it's like our metaphysical food. God is feeding us. Kindly and generously, graciously. We thank God for this. It's our food, metaphysical diet. Food. Right? Yeah, it's great. Where's my, uh, brand new this year, uh, the Willow Tree Bark Vodka Salicylic Acid Aspirin. Mmm, <sighs> it's giving out the juice. I like it. Force harvest in the springtime. I have this uh, horseshoe mushroom that I saw in a birch tree. Um, I probably pick it like next weekend, okay? When I was picking up these doogie bombs, moosedong, some dog scat, dog droppings, cat scat, yeah. In yard, it's three bags worth of mostly moose pile, moose droppings, moose pellets. Yeah, I saw that post your motion mark. I prefer to pick it. Okay, next weekend. All right, uh, let's get this one done. It's easy. Okay, we know the thief, criminal, misdemeanor, criminal. Is has red car. How many people have red cars? Fifty plus eighty, one thirty. If we pick a random person out of hundred and thirty people, what's the probability that random person, red car owner, is a thief? One over hundred and thirty. Huh? It's that simple. So. What's the probability of that thief is Asian, given that that thief is a red car owner? Yeah. 50 over 130. Because out of 130, 50, there are 50 Asians, right? Yeah. Now, what pro is the probability that thief I'm sorry, is a Hispanic, given that, assuming this witness is correct, that thief own red car owner, okay? Is 80, because there are 80 Hispanics in this red car ownership population, 130, okay? Yeah. So do they add up to one? Yes. We got it. Okay. So, is it more likely that this thief is Hispanic? Yes. This 80 is bigger than 50. More than 50% chance. Okay. Yeah. So what's, what's the... Uh, in percentage-wise? 5 divided by 30, 13, 8 divided by 13? I don't know, but... Approximately, uh, how do you make 13 to 100? How do you make 13 to 100? What kind of multiplication factor should we multiply? It's like uh, 7? 8? About 8, right? It's okay. About 40%, okay? About, about, okay, about, okay. Yeah, it's forty percent versus sixty percent. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So that's the probability. Okay. Yeah. You have one hundred and thirty red car owners. Eighty of them are Hispanics. Fifty of them are Asians. Okay. If you pick random Asian red car owner, yeah, about forty percent chance that that person is criminal. Okay. If you pick random Hispanic red car owner, sixty percent chance that person is criminal. Okay, so that's what we have here.
Again, we are not racists. I love Hispanics. Some of my best friends of mine are Hispanics, okay? So, you just don't have time for political correctness, okay? So, because we are busy, all right? But, okay? Most likely when I write paper on this probability theory in court, yeah, I flipped the scenario so that because I'm Asian and I don't want to be misunderstood as racist. So I flip it, okay, so that in this scenario, Asians are more likely to be criminal than Hispanic, okay? So yeah. Oh, I can make into some animals, okay? Instead of Asian versus Hispanic, let's say cats and dogs. And then I may offend people who are cat owners or dog owners. So you see, yeah, how about some alien species? Like, uh, you have, what, the uh, uh, Yoda people, Yoda tribe versus Mandalorian tribe. <laughs> but, then I may offend the sentiments of Yoda fans, Mandalorian fans. What if I create brand new character, like uh, some alien character, like Planet X and Planet Y? Then people cannot relate to that kind of example, okay? So, all right, we just stick with Asians and Hispanics, okay? So, so that people can understand what we are talking about, okay? What is this? Kind of flipped E, Epsilon, flipped Epsilon. It's a set membership operator, okay? The set theory, that's what it is. It belong to, okay? It's, it's kind of, it's like exactly operator per se. It's more like a, a mathematical word language, okay? This is a mathematical sentence. Thief belongs to Hispanics. Thief belongs to red car owners set. Okay, so it's a mathematical sentence. Okay? Yeah. Very concise, compact language. That's how mathematical language is. Okay? Highly efficient. Right? Yeah. I need to express this in English. Thief belongs to Hispanic set. These long letters, right? Long sentence. But mathematical language? Just three characters, that's it. That's the power of mathematical languages. Highly efficient and concise. Eh? It's a good language, mathematical language. Eh? Yeah. Okay. We did enough mathematics tonight, okay? So, we'll take five minutes break and then uh, maybe... I don't know, maybe we talk about politics or some story time or karaoke, dancing, martial arts, whatever. Yeah. Whew. It was nice and easy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice and easy. Good. Let me take off these long pants, okay? So, uh, Getting too warm. Because I'm drinking alcohol, alcohol has calorie, right? So, yeah, generate some body heat, I guess. So, okay, we'll take five minutes, please. Okay? Right. okay, thank you.
Uh, yeah, I dropped my cigarette here, so I'll be right back. Uh, let me take a picture of this, okay? Yeah, so we're done with mathematics for tonight. And uh, let's talk about Pebble, Pebble Mine. Neo Pebble Mine project. This paper, 10 pages long. Yeah, I, I sent to my friends and I got some positive reviews. This is more easily understandable and uh, it will be developed at some point. Pebble Mine, why? Potentially, number might be exaggerated, but potentially, yeah, we are talking about $500 billion worth of gold, copper, and molybdenum. All right. That's. Uh, Maybe some Alaskans and some Americans and some people around the world are a little bit scared. Okay? Because it's something very big. We are talking about $0.5 trillion worth of gold, copper, and molybdenum. Okay? It's something extremely big. So, I guess people are a little bit scared. Okay? But, yeah. Some Americans, some international in investors, they got guts to take it. And so am I, okay? I'm not an investor, okay? I don't do that. Why? Because I'm a politician, I have to stay neutral, okay? I cannot own any stocks, okay? Conflict of interest, right? Yeah, I cannot do that. But I appreciate people who just hold on to that stock or pebble mine project, okay? It's, by now, it's kind of like, like 0 0.1 cent or even negative sometimes, okay, uh, because uh, they rejected it, okay. And they are appealing the decision, okay. And I wanted to help, okay? so I wrote this paper and published it. I made friends in Alaska who are uh, politicians and also who are political activists who are political candidates in the future uh, who have better chance than me to get elected so yeah yeah, yeah share this idea yeah implementing go ahead it does not have to be me I, I don't have to be elected I can still help as a secular scholar then I know how to do this okay I know how to research I used to be, I was very well educated in Cornell University as a research scientist, PhD program, in two, for two years. That's a lot. Two years, okay? Yeah, uh, so I know how to do research. I know how to write papers. So I, I'm very, very well trained in that venue. Okay, so, yeah. Just trying to help, okay? And they appreciate it, okay? So, yeah.
Ja. Doing my part. Right? <laughs> so what the table paper is about uh, is about, yeah, just gathering information, mostly from Wikipedia and some other websites too. Okay, yeah, it's 0.5 trillion worth of gold, copper, molybdenum, okay. And environmentally, yeah, it's good criticism, good caution, concern, but we have solution, okay, yeah. Yeah, build a road between Matsu Valley and uh, Iliamna Lake. There's about 200 miles, $3 million per mile to build a road, two-lane road, asphalt. Okay? Yeah. We're talking about 200 times, 200 miles times $3 million per mile. We're talking about $600 million. No problem. Why? Potentially, that pebble mine contains $500 billion worth of uh, minerals, precious metals, okay? So, to make calculation easier, yeah, we're talking about investing $500 million for the road building between Matsu Valley, we're right this place, okay, and uh, Iliamna Lake, 200 miles, okay? So five, over $500 million out of $500 billion is like 0.1%. One over 1,000, 1,000s, okay? Yeah, 0.1%. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Why? We have Iliamna Lake, that's the biggest lake in Alaska, third largest lake in America, about 24th largest lake in North America, okay? that great tourism opportunity and residential opportunity. Why? Because at some point we're gonna build this mine, pebble mine, okay? And we'll make money, there'll be in brand new industry like metallurgy, refinement of this ore, ORE, okay? Gold, we're talking about gold, okay? Traditional Alaska industry, okay? So mining wastewater, yeah, we'll dump it in this road site connecting the Matsu Valley and Iliamna Lake, 200 miles stretch. Yeah, dump the water there because nothing will grow there anyway because we're going to build road. Okay. Yeah. Natural filtration. Okay. Yeah. Water, dirty water, heavy metal, toxic heavy metal. It will filter through it in the soil. Okay, just natural filtration, no problem there. Right? Then also nothing will grow anyway because we build road, highway. Okay. Now, the acidification of heavy metals, no problem. Why? When we build a road, we have to chop down some trees. Okay. If it's a good tree, we'll sell it as timber to build furniture, buildings, timber. But when this tree is kind of infected with this spruce tree beetles, we burn it, make ash, which is alkalic, alkaline, basic. Okay? Yeah, we neutralize, we sprinkle the ash, we burn this spruce tree infected trees, because those are bad. Okay, we burn it and make it into ash and sprinkle that ash to neutralize acidified rocks in the mines, mining site. We have a solution for everything. Why? We do mathematics, right? Yeah, so after mathematics, everything else is so easy. It's like muscle building, metaphysical muscle building. You lift up like, what, 70 pounds of dumbbells? I can't. My max is like 50 pounds, okay? I, I did try a couple of weeks ago, okay? <laughs> Yeah, when you lift up this 50 pound, 70 pound dumbbell, lifting up grocery is a lot easier because how, how heavy is grocery bag? 20 pounds? 
right? Yeah, it's like that, okay? So we, we study mathematics, right? Metaphysical muscles. And then everything else is so easy, okay? Because it's not as difficult as mathematics, right? That's one of the reasons, one of the benefits of studying mathematics, okay? And I do mathematics for fun, right? But there's benefit. It's not that the purpose of me studying mathematics is so that every other problem become very easy. But there's a benefit, okay? But that's not the purpose. I do mathematics for fun, okay? Okay. Martial arts, I do it for fun, to strengthen my spirit and body, also, but mostly for entertainment sake. But it's not the purpose that I try to self-defend myself, self-defense, defense of others. That's not the purpose, but that's the benefit. Okay? The same concept here. We are very good at pattern recognition, okay? Huh? So, Hyundai, Korean company, right? Hyundai. Kind of sounds like, sounds like Japanese Honda, okay? I don't, I don't know, maybe this kind of spelled the same in the Chinese characters, that I don't know, okay? But Hyundai, uh, the originator, later CEO of Hyundai company, uh, his name is Mr. Chong Ju Young. Okay. I think he passed away like about 20 years ago. Okay. Old timer. He's an old timer. Okay. So he's a very legendary figure. He's, he, he does not have any formal education. Maybe some high school, maybe elementary school. Old timer. Okay. He started as, uh, he got a job in car mechanic, car repair store. In South Korea, somewhere. Okay. We take five minutes break, and I tell you that story. Because I was kind of inspired by the, by him. Okay. Yeah, writing this paper, road constru construction, and collecting the dots, pouring out waste water in the car construction site. I was inspired by Mr. Chong Ju Young because I read his biography. Really which is very popular in South Korea, okay? Mr. Chong Ju Young. Yeah. Smart man, very creative ingenious. Right? He's the originator of Hyundai. Nowadays, Hyundai Motor Company, right? But back in the days, uh, it's conglomerate, okay? It's a table in Korean world. Uh, they do many different things. They build condominiums, apartment buildings, okay? skyscrapers, Hyundai, construction company. Okay? They also build ships, big ships, ocean, cargo ships. Hyundai, they do that. Okay? Hyundai Motor Company is later audition. Okay? Mr. Chong Ju Young, okay, he's something else, okay, so he's South Korean, okay, I read his biography. Later in his life, he ran, to, ran for president. He did not get elected, but he created his own party, okay, and he kind of became a laughing stock by South Koreans, okay, so he was, yeah, but he was not politically successful, unlike Mr. Trump, real estate marvel, okay, developer. He built buildings, right? And he also tried some different venue, like Apprentice TV show, but he succeeded, at least he became president once, right? Not the second time. But Mr. Chong Ju Young, he did run for Korean, South Korea president, okay? He did not get elected. But, he was hugely successful in business, international business. Hyundai, and Mr. Chong Ju. Okay, so we take five minutes, okay, and then I'll tell you all about him. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, we discovered a good subject, Mero, to talk about it. But we, we did talk about it way back, maybe a year or two years ago. Right here, okay. Uh, yeah, repetition. That's fine. Okay. Mr. Chung Ju Young. We talk about him, okay? Okay, story time. Uh, but before that, let's take a break from story time. Uh, politics, okay. <laughs> Our entertainment. Ah, uh, boy. Ah, uh, entertainment, okay. So, uh, voters, the way I see them, they're like God. In democracy, voters, they're absolute monarch. Dictator voters, people, the people, okay, in American democracy. The way I see them is they are like God, voice of God. So they cannot be wrong. They are absolute. Okay, so if they vote for Mrs. Commissioner and she become elected, yeah, I, 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 that's. I'm okay with that. Okay, but I have some concern, okay? I don't think she's strong enough to implement the Pebble Mine project. I don't think she's at par with Mr. Senator Ted Stevens and Congressman Dan Young, who implemented, helped the Trans Alaska pipeline for oil from Prudhoe Bay to Valdez. Like, about like a couple of thousand miles long pipeline. That's like a miracle. Okay? Uh, Mr. Daniel, Congressman, I met him many times, okay? He knows me, okay? And Mr. Senator Ted Stevens, I know a couple of people, friends of mine, who used to work for him. But Mr. Senator Ted Stevens, I never met him, okay? Uh, but I know a couple of Alaskans who used to work for him, and they are older than me. Okay, Mr. Senator Ted Stevens, yeah, he's old time, okay. He passed away in an airplane accident, okay. Around, ironically, in the Pebble Mine web site. Around that area, okay. Some airplane crash. Yeah, sorry, okay. But he opposed the Pebble Mine project, okay. But he accomplished big job, this Trans Alaska pipeline, okay. So Mrs. Commissioner, 
Is she on par with Mr. Senator Ted Stevens or Congressman Dan Young? I don't think so. I don't think she's that strong person. Okay. I think she's kind of weak candidate. Because she's going along with the party line, 100%. Okay. Oh, pro-Trump, checked. Pro-life, checked. Pro-gun, checked. She's just too obedient to the Republican Party, okay? That's why she's very, she's Republican Party, not just in Alaska, for nationwide. Republican Party's favorite candidate in Alaska for next Senate election next year, okay? Because she's so obedient. And to me, that's a sign of weakness. Okay. I don't think she, she's strong enough to face, I don't think she's smart enough, intelligent enough, strong enough to face all these anti mind activists. Can I? Yeah. I can work with them. We'll bring them to the discussion, bring them to the ta table. Environmentalists, anti mindists Yeah, we bring them to the table. Let them be part of the solution. I know how to do this. Yeah, diplomacy, okay? Yeah, we'll reason with them, okay? Oh, yeah, healthy, good, constructive criticism, points well taken, voice heard. Let's work together. I know how to do this, okay? She? No, I don't think she knows how to do this, okay? She, she's just too busy. Yeah, busy with what? <laughs> Campaigning? Saying the same thing every time, okay? She's kind of typical politicking, this party politics, party animal. Okay, she says she's next generation Republican, but there's nothing new there. She's just younger and she's female. But I don't think she's smart. I don't think she's strong. Okay, she's just another one of those stereotypical some politician politicking, okay? And uh, she's modeling after failed re-election campaign of President Trump back in 2020, last year. And so yeah, her campaign is, what I'm seeing so far is not going to the right direction. That's my impression. I'm biased against the whole campaign because I'm also running. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think she can do pebble mine, okay? I don't think she has strength or ingenuity, smartness, intelligence to pull this out. Okay. She might? Who knows? If she can, yeah, let her do it. Oh, I'd be more than happy to see that. And it'd be great if she can do it. If she get elected and pull out this Pebble Mine project, oh, I'd be very happy to see that. Yeah. I just have some reason of doubt that she can do it, okay? Because she shows some sign, signs of weakness, okay? She's too obedient, okay? So going on all mainstream, right? Eh. Yeah. Republican Party, yeah. Pro Trump, yeah. Pro gun, yeah. Pro life, yeah. I'm pro gun, by the way, okay? Yeah. But am I pro life? Well, not really. Am I pro Trump? Eh, not really, okay? <laughs> not after January 6th, okay? But, but I'm pro gun, okay? Pro life, eh, kind of in the middle. Slightly left leaning. Pro Trump, anti Trump, eh, kind of slightly left leaning. Okay, that's me. Huh? But pro gun, yeah, I'm right leaning. Yes. How about violence in, violence in, uh, violent crimes in, uh, Af not Afghanistan, but Af Africa, uh, no, not Africa, but in Alaska, violent crimes. Well, we just need to build pebble mines, okay? Then people will be happy. We make money, there'll be a lot of jobs. Idle hands, there was pride ground. Hungry hands, there was pride ground. Angry hands, there was pride ground, okay? If we make pebble mine work, okay? And we have jobs, no more idle hands, because we have jobs there. And we make money, we'll be well fed, we will not be hungry, and we will not be angry. We go to Iliamna Lake, fish, sail, boats, 
we have some fun. Okay. Yeah. Crimes, homelessness, it will go away. I know how to do this, okay. So. Uh, does she know how to do this? Maybe not now, but maybe she can learn, okay. So yeah, I sent these papers to my political friends, okay. Maybe they can present this paper, new paper mine project to her. Maybe she can learn. Let her do it, yeah, I have no problem with that. No. That'll do it. It'd be great. Yeah. But I just have some reasonable concern. Okay. But she can learn. Okay. She's young. I think she's a couple of years older than me. Okay. I don't know. But yeah, she's in her mid 40s. I don't know. She got energy, diligence. Yeah, she can learn. The letter, yeah, letter learn, learn the ropes, humble herself, because I think she's kind of arrogant, okay. Yeah, let her humble herself, let her learn, and, and then, then get to have a mind project going on. I, I'd be very happy to see that, because United States Senator is six years, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to see that, okay. No problem there, yeah. Yeah, let her take my ideas for free. I my ideas are free, okay. Yeah, so I sent to my hundreds of friends, politicals, okay. Yeah, let them present her. I did say that in the paper, in the footnote, okay. It does not have to be me, okay. Yeah, I call on red letters. Some of them are my close friends, okay. Yeah, let them do it too. Or their favorite candidate, let her do it. Future politicians, let them do it. It does not have to be me. Pay my project. I'm just trying to help. I do my part. Because I'm intellectual. I have intelligence. I have PhD background, although I dropped out. But I was very well trained in researching, writing, research papers. I, I, I'm trained to do that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Just trying to help, okay? Let them do it. Okay? No problem. Okay? Yeah. Just do my part. Problem. Okay, so. Do I pray for her, Mrs. Commissioner? Yeah, I do. God, please let her and her people repent, wise up, not dumb down like they have been doing. Past months or so, okay. Let them wise up. Let them humble themselves and stop being so elitist and arrogant. Let them wise up, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I do pray for her, her campaign, her, her people, okay. I, I, yeah, I do pray for her people, okay. Mrs. Commissioner, okay, yeah. I, I, I cannot help, uh, I cannot help, but, uh, Mentioning this in Star Wars movie, okay? Jabba the Hutt. I guess I'm kind of like Jabba the Hutt. When I was in the US Army, okay? Like, ho ho ho! They make fun of my laughing style, like, goffo, right? Ho ho ho! Like, I'm like Jabba the Hutt, right? Oh! Mighty Chewbacca, okay? And, uh, ho ho ho! Oh, you Jedi! Uh, you're playing tricks on me? You're trying to play tricks on my employees? I'm Jabba the Hutt, okay? Jedi that... Jedi trick, kind of hypnosis, mind trick. Oh, you may fool my employees, but you're not gonna fool me. I'm Jabba the Hutt, okay? <laughs> Shh! Okay, yeah, because I, I'm not gonna mention her name, because I'm kind of protective. She's not that famous, okay? I only mention famous nationwide, international wide, those people, yeah, I do mention their names, but when it comes to smaller people, like Mrs. Commissioner, yeah, I don't mention their, their names because I'm protective of their privacy. Okay. So, okay. Shh. okay, so, we'll take five minutes, okay, so. 
Uh, if, if you are not Alaskan, if you are not Republican Party person or political savvy, you probably have no idea what I was, what I just talked about. But some of you might know. Okay, so it's a joke. Okay, so, kind of inside a joke. Okay, so we take five minutes. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm bad. Okay, as promised, some story time, Mr. Chong Joo Young. Okay, I read his biography. It was fascinating. Okay, he started as a car mechanic. Okay, apprentice in car mechanic shop. When probably nineteen thirties, nineteen forties, nineteen fifties in South South Korea, somewhere in South Korea. Okay, uh, he was born poor. He he's like this Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie of South Korea or Rockefeller of South Korea, okay. Started very small, born in very poor family. Car uh, Rockefeller was his first name. John. John D. J.D. Rockefeller. Okay. That's what I wrote. Old Tycoon, okay. Yeah, boom, poor, right? Like Abraham Lincoln, president, okay? A self made man, okay? So that's Mr. Chong Jiyong of South Korea, okay? He was boom, poor. But he talked about his parents, okay? Yeah. High, very ethical, moral people. They are poor, but good discipline, ethics, morality, okay? Yeah, so he was blessed with this metaphysical asset, diligence. Discipline, ethics, morality. Though his parents were poor, he got good education. Family, parental education from his parents. Mr. Chang Joo Young, okay. And he got a job, maybe he was high school dropout or whatever, okay. He had to make money, okay, to support his family as a teenager. So he got a job as a you know, mechanic shop, apprentice. He had to learn how to fix a car, okay. And the mechanic car repair shop somewhere in Korea, South Korea. I'm not sure if it was Seoul or not. Okay. I think it was. I don't know. So he got this job, okay? And the mechanics, car mechanics, car repair shop owner has a son, but his son was lazy. And Mr. Chong Joon was very diligent. So, the mechanics, car mechanic shop owner, car repair shop owner, 
He retired and he gave his shop to Mr. Chong Ju Young, although he was not his son. Because his son was lazy, okay? Because this car repair shop owner really liked Mr. Chong Ju Young, although they are not relatives. Because he was good, hardworking man. So he gave, when he retired, he gave this shop to Mr. Chong Ju Young. And he did very well as a car mechanics mechanic and he started to purchase other car owner car repair shops failing car repair shops yeah MMA merger and acquisition okay so he, and then <laughs> his business empire start to grow little by little okay. merger and acquisition as a car mechanic shop owner, okay. Yeah. Later on, decades later, yeah, he uh, start to venture out to some other businesses, shipyard, to build cargo ships, big ships. It was first time in South Korean history, okay. He started building big cargo ships. Okay. Yeah. And some Greek business person hired Mr. Chong Ju Young's company, yeah, to commission this project to build a cargo ship and it followed. It was successful, okay. So some Greek businessman. Okay. I'm just uh telling you from what I read about twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, when I was in South South Korea. He his biography, autobiography, was hugely popular back in the 1990s. Okay. I read it as a high school student in South South Korea. Okay. Very well written, okay, so... And he got some help from South Korean professional writers, okay, but... The title of that autobiography, 이 땅에 태어나서, what does that mean in English? As I was born on on the earth, planet earth, okay, yeah. It was that, okay. Yeah. So, his invention, he got some doctoral, honorary doctoral degree from Oxford or Cambridge in England, okay, for the invention. Mr. Chong Ju Young method, okay. Yeah, you have ebb and flow, tide, high tide, low tide, tidal wave, very fast water, right? Yeah, ebb and flow, okay, so it's very difficult, it's water flowing too fast, so sometimes they need to slow it, slow it down, some resistance, some obstacles, slow it down, and he sank, decommissioned, this functional ship, sank it, sink it down, to slow down this ebb and flow, this high tide, low tide, the tidal wave, okay, and he invented that method. And he got some honorary doctoral degree from Oxford or Cambridge for that. Okay. He maybe his elementary school dropout, I don't know, okay, no, not much formal education, but using common sense and ingenuity, ingeniousness, some creativity, okay. He invented that method, okay. Yeah. He got Oxford or Cambridge honorary doctoral degree for that in engineering. So yeah, I was inspired by him, okay, so some honorary, honorable mention, okay, so that's that. Mr. Chong Ju Young, okay. Yeah. In his autobiography, I remember his parents, okay. His father, hardworking, ethical, moralistic man, although they were poor, and they had many kids, and Mr. Chong Ju Young's brother, he had many brothers, okay. His brother's wife, so the daughter-in-law of Mr. Chong Jung's father, she got sick. Okay. So she was in bed ridden, okay. She was sick, she was recovering, and Mr. Chong Jung's father combed the hair of his son's wife, combing her hair, okay, when she was bedridden. 
and Mr. Chong Jiang, his brother's wife, so kind of sister-in-law. Okay, she really appreciated that. So that's Mr. Chong Jiang's father combing the hair of his daughter-in-law when she was bedridden to make her feel better. Beautiful story, right? Yeah. Yeah, that happened like probably the 1960s, 1950s, 1940s, something like that. Okay, they live in very small house. Mr. Chong Jiang, his brother, and his brother's wife. Mr. Chong Jiang's father, his mother. Okay, and they were they were taking care of their daughter-in-law, bad rhythm, okay, with some flu, whatever, okay. Mr. Chong Jiang's father combing her daughter-in-law's hair so that she would feel beautiful. And feel better, okay. Beautiful story. I'm trying not to cry, okay? It's just so parental love, right? Yeah. They're not blood relatives, they're not blood related, but his son's wife, okay? Daughter in law, okay? Yeah, she got sick, okay? Maybe some flu, whatever, common cold, okay? It was bedridden, okay, back in the days in South Korea, 1940s, okay. And they were poor, they didn't have any insurance. Okay, so just combing her hair, okay, to to make her feel better, feel beautiful. I think she got better after that. <laughs> yeah. Strengthen the spirit of this daughter in law, son's wife. So Mr. Chong Ji Young. He wrote about that. Memory of his parents, okay. Taking care of daughter in law, okay. Beautiful parental love story, okay. It is beautiful. There are some so many untold stories out there, okay. So I know some, okay. We we'll take five minutes break, okay, and then I'll tell you some more stories. So I have some American stories, okay? Yeah, yeah I told you Korean stories enough. Okay, that's enough. Okay. I have learned some American stories, untold stories. Okay, yeah. I tell you, okay. Give me five minutes, okay? Uh, yeah, let me wash my face. Some kind of theory a little bit, okay? Yeah, yeah. When I remember this, very. Heart touching stories, I do cry, okay. So, hmm? yeah, I'm a computer science major, former, okay, former computer programmer, but I'm not a machine, I have emotion, yeah, I'm only human, okay. So, I, I, I do cry sometimes, okay. So, all right, which is fine, okay. I tell some American stories, some untold stories, okay. Oh. I'm a mess, all right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah, I washed my face, okay? I was a mess. Theory, okay? Uh, yeah, there's some human side in me, okay? Yeah, I do mathematics. I'm a former computer pro programmer. My PhD program computational biology, okay? Yeah, I may give you some impression of being too mechanical. Computer programmer, former computer programmer, and... Mathematics, right? Yeah, but I have some human side in me. I do have emotion, okay? I love this Beach, not Beach Boys, not Beatles, but Bee Gees, okay? Brother Gibbs. Emotion, okay? It's one of my favorite songs of Bee Gees, okay? I do get emotional sometimes, okay? No, I'm not a robot. <laughs> I'm not, okay. Yeah, I, I, I love computer programming, okay. I, I used to be a computer programmer, okay, back in the days. Computer science major, medicine is constant, okay. And also, I got a computer programming job in Los Angeles, California, Pasadena, California, and in Alaska here about four years ago, okay. I studied computer science, medicine is constant, and also in Cornell University, computational biology, okay. Computer science department, okay. Programming, okay. Yeah. Artificial intelligence, okay. Yeah, I study all those wonderful things, but I'm not a robot. I have some emotion, there's some human side in me, okay. Yeah, I cry sometimes, whatever, okay. <sighs> what now? Yeah. So yeah, Mr. Song Joong, he used this decommissioned shipwreck, okay, to sink it down in the ocean so that it slow down the ebb and flow. That high tide, low tide, tidal wave is too fast, right? To slow it down, he sank the decommissioned ship, okay, a waste. He make. He made use of this waste, decommissioned ship. He sunk it down to slow down this tidal wave, okay. And he got honorary doctoral degree for that, okay, in engineering, okay. So, very smart, ingenious, ingenious, creative thought. Okay, that, that's Mr. Chang Jung. He got no formal education, okay. Maybe elementary school dropout, okay. So, but he was smart. Common sense, okay. Yeah, give it some resistance, obstacle, okay, to slow down the flow of water, okay. Some other, another episode in his bi autobiography, okay. He has some hard time. Hyundai Motor Company, okay. He has some hard time, okay. And there's this car factory and to the road, to the car factory from the town, there's a huge bulldog in the middle of the road. And he said, guys, this huge bulldog rock is not supposed to be here, okay? So move it away, okay? It's kind of micromanage a little bit, okay? Yeah, why this huge bulldog is right here in the middle of the road from the town to car factory? This rock, bulldog, is not supposed to be here, okay? Move it away, okay? Guys! I remember that part, okay? Mr. Chong Yeah. I mean, Korean legend, Korean fable, okay? Uh, Chong Do Ryong, okay? They, a lot of Koreans, some Koreans, Speculate that Mr. Chong Joon was Chong Do Ryong. Was it Chong Do Ryong? Yeah, Chong means righteous. Okay, Do means way. Ryong means spirit. Okay, so spirit of the right way. Chong Do Ryong. Okay, 
is a Korean version of Messiah, Savior. Yeah. So there, there will be some Mr. Chung, Toryong. Chung means righteousness, righteous, To means way, Young means spirit, okay, the spirit of the righteous way, okay. Some people speculate that it was Mr. Chung Ju Young, okay, can't rhyme, right? Maybe it was, I don't know. Yeah. It's Korean Messiah concept, okay, Chung Do Young, okay. Spirit, yeah, Ghostbusters, yeah, there's some x file episode about Chinese ghost, right? Some story about Asian Americans, right? In San Francisco, I think, okay. Yeah. Hell Money, that was the title of the x file episode. Yeah. One of my favorite episodes of all time. So I was comfortable throwing one in Los Angeles, California, okay, yeah, for like uh, three years. After that, I moved to San, kind of like San Jose, okay, San Jose is like 30 minutes, one hour south of San Francisco. San Jose, California, there's like Silicon Valley, okay. Why did I move up there after three years in Los Angeles, California? Because I started suffering from constipation. Los Angeles, California is dry and hot, so I suffer from constipation, okay? But once, when I was there for three years, it snowed, okay? More like hail, right? <laughs> so people are taking pictures, okay? We also had earthquake there too, okay? When I was in Los Angeles, California for three years. Uh, between 2006 and 2009, I was there for three years, okay? I started having this constipation, hemorrhoid, okay. So I moved up to San Jose, California, okay. It rained there, San Francisco, okay. It's cooler, it's up north. Five hours from Los Angeles, California, up north, five hours north, San Jose, San Francisco, okay. It rains there, it's cooler. It's not as hot and dry as Los Angeles, okay. Because I'm a very sensitive animal when it comes to moisture and temperature, okay. Yeah, I started suffering from constipation for so health reason. Okay, I moved up to San Jose, California. I start having start to have interviews in Silicon Valley. Okay, but yeah, then I joined the U.S. Army. Is that why? Oh, come to program is so brain intensive. Okay, I need some brain break, brain vacation. Okay, let's do brawn instead. Brain versus brawn. Okay. Metaphysics versus physics, okay? Yeah, I joined the US Army as a junior university soldier. Okay? And the rest is history, okay? So, so American history, American story, untold story. When I was in San Jose, California, 30 minutes south of San Francisco, Silicon Valley, okay? Yeah, I didn't have any job. I did not know anybody, okay? So, some so networking, okay? I volunteered. Volunteerism, okay, back in 2009, right? Yeah, to meet people, okay, social networking, okay. And the, I, one of the volunteer, volunteerism assignment for me, I did also this volunteerism in Ithaca, New York, okay, and Los Angeles, California, and also San Jose, California. I did volunteerism, okay, yeah. pro bono, okay, yeah. To meet people, socialize, social networking. Okay. In San Jose, California, yeah, one of my assignments as a volunteer was it's not hospice care, no, it's not that. Okay. It's more senior care, okay? So we interact with seniors. Okay. And this was this Caucasian gentleman, bedridden, okay? And he would tell me his experiences, observations. His life history. I think he was in his 80s or 70s. Okay. He was bedridden, gentleman, Caucasian gentleman, okay, in his 70s or 80s, okay. So he would tell me all these wonderful stories, okay. He was like, Young man, do you know what a hardship is? I was like, 
mister, yeah, maybe not enough. Okay, I tell you what the hardship is. When I was young, in Great Depression, 1929, the Black Friday stock market crash. Yeah, I'm like 80 years old. That was like 2009, okay. So yeah, he went through Great Depression. 1929, something like that, Black Friday, okay. Maybe he was a teenager, or he, maybe he was in his 20s, okay. So that was 2009 and 2029, so 80 years old. Uh, maybe he, he was a baby, okay, whatever, okay. Two thousand nine, two thousand twenty nine, eight years, whatever. Okay, yeah, but yeah, you tell me about Great Depression, World War Two. Okay, uh, he said he did not have any shoes to wear, so he was barefooted. He was, his family was so poor, economic downturn, the Great Depression, whatever, okay. As a child, he remembered, he was like 80, 90 years old, okay. I, I guess he was 90 years old, okay. Maybe he was 10 years old back in, way back in 20, 1929. That was like 2009 that I met that gentleman, okay. Maybe he was 10 years old, maybe he was in his 90s, okay. Bedridden gentleman, okay. So, young man, yeah, I'll tell you a story, okay, back in, when I was 10 years old, 1929 Great Depression, okay, we did not have shoes to wear, so we are barefooted. In America. Back in 1929. We did not have shoes to wear. Young man, do you know what hardship is? I was like, oh, Mr. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe not enough. Okay, that's what I said. Because I've been through some, some hardships, some Buddhism, okay? So, not starvation, though. Not BF. Bear feeling, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, some. I have some experience with barefoot. We take five minutes, okay, then I'll tell you. Yeah, this episode, okay, yeah, we'll stop and restart, okay, because this comes from software, Microsoft, great camera software, okay. But, uh, we'll take five minutes break, okay, it's been almost like two hours and 45 minutes, okay, so. We'll stop and restart, okay, and I'll tell you, my version of barefoot story, okay, it was not starvation, not great depression, I'm not that old, I'm four, 42 years old, okay, but I do have some story about being barefooted. It's kind of comical, interesting story, okay, so, okay, we'll take five minutes, okay, yeah, see you soon, bye. God bless you, I love you, thank you for loving me, okay, thank you. We'll see you in five, okay, okay.